Thank you for joining us here at KEXP, where the music matters. I'm Cheryl Waters. You can find us at kexp.org, streaming worldwide. We're at 90.3 FM in the Seattle area and also streaming on our free mobile apps. We're down here in the KEXP studios with our dear old friends. It's Hand Habits Live. Welcome. So wonderful to see you. Great to see you too, Cheryl, as always. I am so excited about a new collection of songs, Sugar the Bruise. You going to play something from that for us? Sure are, yeah. It's Hand Habits live on KEXP. Take it away. I'm making to see Beginning inside of the end, I'm begging Eating from the palm of your hand, I'm amazing To call you my friend, is there something wrong with that? You're listening to Hand Habits live on KEXP. This one's for everybody who likes to dance in their car. If you're listening in your car or on the internet, bust a move. In the belly of the museum, past the halls of men in power, technological advances spanning millennia of knowledge. Her face and neck and shoulders seem to hover like a tower on the pedestal of marble as you stood there for an hour. Weeping at the symbols in his cold upon the tile Our golden disk of sunlight seemed to circle you entirely And so you ask the question, why is she in Germany? 
And did have me dancing. <laughs> You're listening to Hand Habits live on KEXP songs from the new album Sugar the Bruise.
So beautiful. You're listening to Hand Habits live on KEXP. This is a real old one. It's from the first record. And you know, I didn't play songs from this record for a long time because I couldn't sing them anymore. My voice changed. And then I had this grand vision. Just played in a different key. Doesn't have to sound exactly the same. No. Well, you know, it shouldn't, in my opinion. The songs grow just like we do. It's true, yeah. I know. I'm sure you see that a lot here. I do. It helps keep them alive for you. Yeah, totally.
wonderful to hear that song flower glass comes from wildly idle humble before the void thank you for playing that today yeah thank you for having us here as always and meg your voice sounded beautiful on that and it was wonderful to hear gregory and tim backing you up with beautiful vocals and it's so great to see our good friend alan here we're just so happy to have all of you here today thank you for bringing this beautiful new brand new record sugar the bruise here today Meg, I read that this album was inspired by a month-long songwriting class that you taught a couple of years ago, and you said you discovered a newfound clarity and appreciation of collaboration and embracing the unknown while teaching that. Can you tell me more about this experience and why it was so instrumental in the creation of this collection of songs? Yeah, definitely. So the school is called um, School of Song, which our uh, friend Stephen and Blue created. And I think it started during the pandemic, but they came to me and um, a lot of really great songwriters have taught it. Um, Luke Temple, Lamelda, Al Kempner from Pale Hound, just to name a few. And um, I was really terrified when they asked me to teach it I was like, I don't know how to write songs. I barely identify as a songwriter. And they were both like, what? Like, yeah, you have records. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and during that process, we really took apart what, during the, the pre preparation, we took apart what the process of my songwriting has been in a form that I could relay it back to somebody and give them prompts. And and it was just amazing. I I never thought I would get that close to how writing happens for me and it's not always the same and and I didn't really want to get that close to it but 
in the wake of it, like seeing all of these songwriters who some of them didn't even n play music really before that or had never written a song, just write all these amazing songs based off of the way that I, I sort of go about doing it. And, and collaboration is, is one of them. And, and I mean, this band right here is a testament to that too. Like we all play in each other's bands and I really have felt the benefits of that too and just like sort of lifting each other up and and also improvisation like you said before we played the last song like songs grow in the way that we do and and it it was fun to just remember that you know a song can be presented so many different ways and so going into sugar the bruise i i was sort of on the wake of all of that philosophy and went into the studio with with no songs living in my body in the way that I usually do. And and all of them except for Private Life were written in the studio with my friend Luke Temple. Wow. This was a really collaborative effort, and I love that you worked with Luke. I remember discovering him back in 2005 with Hold a Mat for a Gasoline World and oh. became a huge fan right yeah. at the beginning. And I just loved seeing that you... We're working with him on this. Talk about some of the other people. I know Sasami, your dear friend yeah. also, but a long list of people. Well, yeah, Sasami sang a, a couple things on that record, and she was there. Tim played drums on, I think, almost every song except for Private Life, which is one without drums. Um, Jeremy Har Harris, who doesn't really have an online presence, but he, him and Luke and I did the um, little sub-pop EP that I did, little Seattle local um, Andrew McGuire played drums. My friend, uh, do you know James John Henry? No. He's a great songwriter. His his name is Pete. I'm blanking on his last name. Sorry, Pete. I just know you as Pete. But um, he helped me finish Right Private Life. And yeah, the list goes on and on. And, and I, I really feel like every record is like that. But to me, this one just felt like it felt like more of a collective effort because I wasn't like going into the studio with such a vision. I, I wanted to go in with no expectation, really. I love how many talented friends that you have around you down in Los Angeles. Of course, you live with Kyle of King Tough and Sasami. You were all living together during the pandemic, and it just seems like this creative burst of energy around you all the time, whether you're actively working on an album or not. Yeah, it's, I feel so grateful to live there and just like be surrounded by people that are, they're always blowing my mind. I mean, like, yeah. Like Greg's been opening up on this tour and every night watching Gre your set, Greg, I'm just like, what the hell is happening? This is so good. And feeling, it's just, I am addicted to feeling inspired and I think that LA is a really good place for that. I feel on Sugar the Bruise, I hear these themes of creation and destruction throughout the whole mm. record. You're able to process loss and grief through your songwriting in just such a beautiful and elegant way. Mm. And you also let the music speak for itself. It's just very powerful. How do you channel these different swirling emotions into a concise piece of music? Are you even cognizant of how you're able to do that? No, not really. And, and to be honest, uh, thank you for listening closely but but to be honest during the songwriting course when I was teaching uh, that would be the one thing that I would come up against on how to relay is is there's there's words and there's explanation and there's like you know the psychology and philosophy and method and then there's just being inside of a song which is its own feeling and I think obviously that's why art exists right like so we can live in the feeling of something and and really identify when you can't just whittle it down to words, when words fail. And, and I don't know how I do that, <laughs> really. And I don't think I'm supposed to know, you know, at the end of the day. Well, you said just a moment ago, and I've actually heard you say in interviews before, that you didn't really identify as a songwriter per se. And now after teaching this class and the process of this writing this record, which is new and different for you, how, how do you feel as a songwriter now? Well, always having an identity crisis of some sort. <laughs> um, thankfully, right now, I feel like a songwriter today. Like, today I do. But I'm sure that when I go to make the next record, I will definitely not feel like a songwriter. And, and I think that that's actually an integral part of the process I'm, I'm starting to learn, is the doubt is part of it. And, and the, un, like, the misbelief in myself sometimes is equally as important. Maybe not equally as important, but partially as important as, as really believing in myself because it keeps me really humble. And also it makes me like zoom out and see 
like how to take it all apart and do it again, if that makes sense. Well, you seem to enter each new record with a new creative open heart. You said that you wanted to do something different than you did on Fun House on this one, and you did. So I guess if you just keep creatively inspired and surrounding yourself with all that great inspiration, <laughs> it's exciting to think of what will come next for you. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, thank you so much for bringing these beautiful songs to our KEXB listeners today and these wonderful musicians. We always love to see you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Great to see you too, Cheryl. Oh, always so great to see you. I love our long history together. Keep coming in and with all the other wonderful bands that you surround yourself with. We always love to have all of you here. We're live in the KEXP studios with Hand Habits, the new record Sugar the Bruise, out on Fat Possum Records. Thanks to all of our wonderful listeners for making incredible sessions like this possible. You can make a gift anytime at kexp.org. We are listener powered. That means you make all of these sessions possible. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get notification every time a new video launches. Once again, a big thank you to Hand Habits. Thank you. We're live on KEXP Seattle. Discover great music at kexp.org.